Well, hi guys, it's Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to show you a quick video on how to color fortune cookies in Copic markers. And these are dies, and they're meant to be two-dimensional. They're not really meant to like curl around and be 3D or anything. But what I've done is cut them out of my Nina, and then I put a little piece of scotch tape on the back and then nested these back in, just because it's going to be easier to color these and not have to like start the marker at the edge sort of thing because you can just kind of color alongside that scrap on the outside and i played around with a bunch of different color combinations to try to get the colors right for what a fortune cookie looks like and of course i had to go get some food that they would give me a fortune cookie for so i could have something to compare and get the color right because they're a little on the yellow side and a, kind of a little creamier color than a lot of other cookies. So I thought it would be really helpful to be accurate. So <laughs> I sacrificed for you and I went and got some, uh, some food where they would give me one of the cookies. I know you can go and buy a bag of these, but then I'd have a whole bag. So I decided to instead do something healthy and just have one meal so I could get the one cookie. So I'm layering a couple of colors. This E51 has a lot of yellow to it, so it's gonna be a good color for my highlight. And I'm leaving highlights on those portions of the cookie and it'll appear more later as you see them on the portions that are raised the most. And I'm gonna leave them almost white, not entirely, but almost completely white. And then these portions that are right along where the dye has lines in it, that's where the cracks are. That's where it's gonna get really dark and it wouldn't go much darker than an E23. I mean, technically you could, but it's gonna be hard to get them to blend quickly enough to get back to that light color because it would be really easy to over bake your cookies and make them a lot darker. So I'm gonna add a little bit more shading on uh, kind of the bottom edges of these and then start doing some blending. I decided an E11 was a pretty good color to do that with because it has a little bit of pinkness to it. And that's going to help to push it into that warm color colorway as well because if you stay too much in the browns it's going to like i said look like an over baked cookie but i'm going along the edges of each of the areas that i want to blend it and just kind of scribbling along them knowing that i'm going to add some layers of some other colors but i'm trying to soften that brown edge and right around where that cookie bends you see where that line was that i just put and i'll do the same thing on this one right where the cookie bends is gonna be one of the important places to leave a highlight. Right around that, right above where I'm coloring right now, because you want the shadow to be on the inside of the cookie and then out to the outside, but you wanna leave that curve the highest point and receiving the most light because that's gonna make it look nice and round. And I did have to color these a couple times in order to figure all this out so that I could be able to tell you how to make these look like the most realistic cookies that you can. So I'm coloring around, see how I'm coloring around that highlighted area to leave just that tip, you know, that kind of that top edge as it curls around the cookie. And now I'm going over it with a YR31. And I also switched and use a 2-1 as well. You could probably get away with just doing one or the other without doing both. Because this brings the whole thing back now into that yellow kind of feel that that these kind of cookies have. And the wire three one and wire two one are really similar colors, but it helped me to, to kind of brighten all that color up and give it that normal, normal cookie color that you get when you get them out of the package. I'm using my E51 to kind of blend right toward that highlight then and to soften those edges just a little bit. And look how realistic they look. Isn't that cool? Pretty nifty that you can make this look so real. Now there's another set of stamps called the Good Fortune and it has all of the sentiments that you want to put on that little strip of paper that also comes with the die or you can just you know, cut strips of paper to stick in them in any way. And you can use things like congratulations and then have on the new job as a secondary sentiment. You could put two of the little slips of paper in there. You could have one stamped on them and one tucked in, whatever way you want to do it. And I decided the cookie has spoken was the most hilarious one in the whole set. So the cookie has spoken and then whatever the sentiment is, is going to be on the inside of my cookie, uh, tucked into that little die cut. 
And what I did was put a little thin line of dimensional adhesive. I cut it super, super thin on the outside edge there so that my little fortune doesn't slide all the way in there. And the person can take it out and put it back in if they want to on the card. And then I've added the whole thing to a red card base and that black has just popped up on some dimensional adhesive. And I left them really clean and simple because I thought that was really a cool way to highlight this dye and all the coloring that went into it. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you missed my Japanese garden, then I'll put a link up here on the screen if you want to go see the Japanese cherry blossoms with another set in this new release. And I will see you guys later. Have a really great day. Bye.